Welcome to the Crucial Classics Bring Your Own Copy series, where what we do is watch movies together. We are going to watch all of the biggest titles from that golden age of Hollywood. So join me as we will sync up, press play at the same time, and let's just enjoy the magic from this golden age of Hollywood. classics if this is your first time here definitely welcome and take a look around at our channel plenty of content for you to binge what we do is watch old movies together from start to finish so if you love old movies you've landed in the right spot start by looking at the wall of my living room and it's decorated like this wow I really cannot see <laughs> but I think I showed you the wall of my living room it's decorated like that just because old movies are important to me for the past 31 years so today's title let's get into discussing this one I just am fresh off of doing my research um Natalie Wood that's really what I would say I connect to in watching this film um, it's made in 1961 and her career is kind of on the decline because she starts as a child actress right in Miracle on 34th Street I don't know that that's actually her first film um, but it's like the one that launches her as a little child actress um, so by 1961, she's kind of being regarded as washed up and roles aren't really, adult roles aren't really being offered to her. You know, her career has kind of stalled. So, um, interesting, I did not know this. It's, you know, it's interesting like what appeals to you about a film. I never pay attention to who directs a movie. I really do not. That's the reason why, um, kind of as I've been doing this channel, I've become aware. It's like, oh wow, that movie is directed by the same person, right? I'm tending to see their movies are a certain feel. So I've created some playlists by director that have stood out to me that I have multiple movies of few directors on this channel. Um, Ilya Kazan directs this movie and let me just stick to Natalie Wood for a second. He really took it upon himself to reach out to her. He had her in mind. He wanted to have her just kind of meet with him to get a feel for it. He really was just kind of paying attention to interacting with her. And he said he noticed like this twinkle in her eye that, you know, he said at the time she was a young wife and that was kind of her persona. But he could tell she was kind of really chomping at the bit to still be an actress and be challenged at one. So he definitely saw something that um, he was able to work with. And, you know, they just said he pulled a lot out of her for giving this performance. And that is definitely not knowing anything about Ilya Kazan being the director or his filmography or anything like that. Natalie Wood, I just, I am. Um, Whew, this is a deep movie, right? Like it's one that you kind of strap in. It's like you kind of have to be in a mood to watch it because like if you've seen it, <laughs> you have to be in the mood to rewatch it. Um, and I don't know what's got me in this mood to watch this movie, but um, yeah, it's definitely like an important one in her catalog. And I would, I guess we have to understand it is what transitions her into the series of films that she will make for the rest of the 60s that definitely you don't need to know that she made Miracle on 34th, right? Like, that's what I love about film is you just kind of are touched by a film and you can just focus on the movie. You don't have to have all of this backstory information to inform your opinion of what the movie is doing for you. So before I read all of this stuff that I just looked up about the film, you know, I had already made up my mind that it was a title that's coming up. I will say, like, this is my most recent memory with this film. Um, as I had been an adult, I had always, I've just kind of inherited stuff. So when I was living in, oh, my second or third apartment on my own, my mom had given me a, like, 100 pound 1972 <laughs> square you know heavy you know like a 25 inch screen tv that she had gotten at a garage sale and that was the tv that i had in my home um so finally at a certain point i upgraded to um more of the flat screen 1080p tv and I had that thing for a few years and then it just one day burned out on me. It wouldn't turn on. And I was like, oh no. So I had to 
get another TV. Now they were delivering it to my home, okay? Because for like a week, I was without TV. My previous TV wouldn't turn on at all. So that was really dripping me out. Not being able to watch my movies, people, you know what I mean, on a TV. I was limited to my computer. So I was just really going through withdrawals of not having access to it was definitely Turner Classic. I had Turner Classic as cable at that point in time. They were delivering my new TV. So they were setting it up. They were, it was big, right? So these two dudes were setting it up on my uh, stand, plugged it in. Like while they were still just getting everything connected, I was like, just plug it in. I need to turn it on. And I went straight to Turner Classic and Splendor in the Grass was on. And I feel like it may have been right at the end of the movie. I think I caught it right at the end scene. And there was just something about that that captured me. Just seeing it again, the movie again. I mean, it wasn't the first time I had seen it, but to, it was like, I was already going through withdrawals from not having access to my old movies for a week. And then to just turn it on and get like a fix of that movie at that moment it stays with me to this day so um it just kind of seared that movie into me a little bit more uh, because i feel like you know i caught it just at that moment that broadcasting of it but it was available it played again within the month so um yeah natalie wood's performance in this thing is definitely very gripping um this is warren Beatty's first movie that he makes uh he'd been acting in a play that Ilya Kazan had directed him in, so that was how he, you know, was known to be considered for this role. And supposedly, okay, so here's the transition into a segue into Ilya Kazan. Supposedly, um, they're making the movie, and Warren Beatty gets a little uppity, he's getting a little frustrated at a moment in the taking his direction. And so, I don't know, like, the cut's been called or whatever, right? So, because um, he's not doing it on camera, I don't think. But anyway, he just felt the need in front of kind of everybody on set to say to Ilya Kazan, why did you testify before the House Un-American Committee, right? The, the McCarthy stuff that was going on. So that's the thing about Ilya Kazan. And I'll tell you the reason why... I knew I needed to look up Ilya Kazan. I had no idea. I was just doing research. I was like, what are themes that are going on in Splendor in the Grass? Okay, so I read an article about that. And then it, that was my, today I learned that Ilya Kazan directed this movie. Why I knew I needed to look him up is because I witnessed what happened. And I didn't realize it was all the way back in 1999 when I got many references to this as I was just now looking it up. I was like, damn, that happened in 1999? That makes sense, though, because that was about the last era that the Oscars were kind of what you had to tune into and the billion people that are watching it at a time. I mean, I don't think they have quite that large of an audience anymore, but I remembered seeing some type of an award ceremony where Ilya Kazan was being awarded. You know, he ain't still active doing things like they're honoring his whole entire career legacy and just how many people stayed in their seats and weren't clapping for him and I was like oh who's this guy and like what's controversy around him obviously that like these people in the audience nowadays how rude right like it was just clearly they were making a stand and a statement about nah because they had just given his little presentation of like why he was getting his award and it was like oh yeah okay this dude made some really important films and stuff and so I was just like Right now, when I saw that he directed this film, I, knew, I was like, I gotta get to the bottom. What is this? So, here's evidently what happens, right? Like, and I guess there's interpretations of what happens, but you know, those trials are going on and they're just gunning for people. It's a big part of that movie that I just told you I watched recently about Lucille Ball. Like, really kind of, a, it's a focus on she had just been put on the radar and she had just been outed as previously having been a part of that organization right and but yet she had also testified in front of the committee and they had supposedly cleared her 
But after she had been cleared, it was getting put out into just, you know, the newspapers and stuff that that had been something she had been connected to. And so was it going to affect people wanting to watch her show? Was her show going to get canceled? Like that, it really hones in on a week that that was up in the air, right? Like this had just been put out into the public domain for people to know that and now make your decision if you're going to watch her show. Um, so it was a big, huge deal. Like really, if you were on the wrong side of their radar, right? Like people's careers completely ended. So evidently what Ilya Kazan does is he voluntarily, like friendly, goes and just speaks to them. And he gave up names of specific people that had been in the organization with him like decades before. He himself had been in the organization decades before. And so then decades later, when all of this stuff is going on, he goes in and he voluntarily gives up the names of, they said it was eight specific people. He gave eight names, right? So this just gets into all different types of themes in life, right? Like I love, I used to watch Hawaii Five-0 pretty um, regularly. Like I own the series on Voodoo. There is an episode where one of the little girls of the two cops is in trouble at school. Dad's gotta go, he's called in. Like what the heck is going on? His daughter is a good little girl. So she wouldn't, you know, have done something to get into the principal's office, but why she was in there is she had seen something and she was refusing to say what had happened, who did what, and that's why she was getting in trouble. And so the dad has her in the car and they're driving home and he's like, why would you not just say it? And the little girl says, I'm no rat. And he's like, oh my gosh, like what's happening to our youth when the mafia code of conduct, you know, it's like how they are. <laughs> like, where'd you get that from? You know what I mean? Like he didn't teach her not to be a rat, but that's how she, that was a rule for her. Like she was not going to be a rat. And so I think it's just the basis of that is what people's issue was with the fact that Ilya Kazan friendly voluntarily went in to um, give these names. Now, you know, to ask him about it later, he said that he gave every name that he gave, these people already knew about. Like they already had these names on their list, but the controversy is, well, no, not everybody's name that you gave. Some of the people, yeah, they already had on the list, but some of the people they didn't. And as a result, like, I don't think there was anybody whose name he gave that wasn't impacted. And like, some people were completely outed. Like they're, they were completely blacklisted and just weren't able to survive that. And so that's the controversy around him. Like that's, people can't, some people can't allow, you know, it, the, the lack of congruence around that, right? Like it's just, one thing outweighs the other for some people. Like they don't regard his career work for his character, right? Display, choice, what it represents because, um, ooh, I was reading, you know, somebody asked Orson Welles about it and he was like, oh, you've kind of asked the wrong person because he was like flat out, you know what I mean? He sold out people to save his own movie directing career when versus doing that he could have absolutely maintained being employed because he started out as being a director on broadway and so he's like he did not have to out people to preserve his movie directing career because he could have maintained employment being highly paid to stay being a broadway director and he salvaged his own career by knowing that he was destroying the careers of others. And he, he was just like, I don't have any use for that. You know what I mean? So that, he was like, oh, okay. I mean, he point blanked it and he, it was very clear what his take on that situation was. So, and I think a lot of people maintained feeling that way about him. Um, it was interesting it, just to read about like, cause I, I just needed to know for myself, what was that thing that I witnessed in 1999? Cause that, it was very blatant and it was very much something that you needed to understand. There was a reason for it. So anyway, 
But you know what? Before today, I didn't even know that he directed this movie, and I didn't even know what the problem was until I just needed to edify myself on it right now. So I get it. I could have a problem with that. You know what I mean? Like I, that argument where it's like you made a decision to throw people underneath a bus for self-preservation, looking out for number one. But I mean, you had alternative ways and means that everything about your livelihood wasn't going to be forsaken would you just not have done what you did just one last thing he offered the argument that he hated that organization like he that was the reason why he left that organization he was exp I, it was kind of cryptic to kind of read what i it was like evidently quotes from him he was saying at a point in time, like, that organization had put him on trial for not being, like, um, obedient enough to the organization. And, like, they were, like, they put him kind of on their a trial, like, what people were being put on trial for, for being a part of that organization. So he was like, I hated them, you know, and I, that's the reason why I left. And, you know, I didn't have any problem with, you know, he's like, I didn't see a need to preserve secrecy around people that were wanting to be a part of that organization. I hated that organization. I hated what it standed for. And I didn't feel any need to have to sacrifice, he did say to sacrifice my own livelihood and career for, you know, respecting that organization. I didn't have a respect for it. So, okay, you know what I mean? Okay. Let's keep it moving, <laughs> but that's what there is to know about that. Um, this movie does win Oscar for Best Screenplay. It was, I don't know, the guy that wrote the screenplay, like he wrote it, he had told Ilya Kazan his thoughts about this story um, before he wrote it out, like they were working together on a play. And then he wrote it. They said he wrote it for a book, but and then he said, but then he changed it to a screenplay. So I don't know if the book of this actually got published, um, but it went for best original screenplay. So it's an original story for this movie. I don't know if a book at the same time also accompanied it, but let's see. Yeah, um, here's one little critique about it. I mean, this movie is, and it is, it's like a small critique. There was. You, they focus a little bit too much on some of the extraneous characters that get a little bit more, a few more minutes of screen time than their story development needs. And I would say, like, that's some of the moments where the movie gets a little bit slow. Um, but really, just Natalie Wood redeems the whole thing. And so what is the theme about this movie? I would just quickly dive into that. Um, it's, and you know, according to Ilya Kazan, like, the movies that he made were things that were topics of, like, just importance to him gentleman's agreement that type of thing so this one is really just a look at kind of the um passing on family like ancestral wounds right and breaking cycles like i think in this day and age we hear a lot more about that like break the cycle you know break the ancestral cycles of unhealed things that happen in the family lines um, you know, I think in this day and age, a lot of people where you spanked the hell out of as a child. And so maybe as a parent in this day and age, you decide not to parent in that way. You are the one breaking the cycle, right? Because if you could have any issue with your parent doing that to you, oh, their parent and the parent, and the parent did that to them. Right. And so, and then it kind of is too, that inability of the generation prior that kept the unhealed wounding whatever the topic is, right? That they're passing down, where it's like, they're just blind about it. It's what happened to them. It's what we do. That's what I do. Um, that generation that kind of is not the one that breaks the cycle, their inability to comprehend the need to break the cycle. So that is really what we're seeing with Natalie Wood's character just being tormented by having to be in the confines and the constraints of societal pressures around her sexuality, right? And at moments when she is obviously losing her mind, like literally we, we see her have that mental breakdown where it's just as she can't deal with it, the pressure of the conflict of like how she would prefer to be able to just be in this relationship with this young man, expressing some things, right? That she just at the exact, she would kind of prefer to be able to go there, but at the same time, she just has all this pressure to not do it. She's gonna try to have a conversation with her mother about 
the pressure that she's feeling like mom i need a little bit of human being interaction like can i express to you like what is going on and the, the turmoil that's going on inside of me her mom ain't trying to talk to her about nothing like that um she doesn't think that even feeling like that should be what a, a woman should be feeling period and no she's that's what i can't even talk to you about this because i don't know how to be any different of a mother to you than the way my mother was to me and at the same time too like i would never judge my mother so it's like okay all right then we're gonna get nowhere <laughs> and if edie is going to have a recovery and live the life that she wants to live um, she's going to have to break a cycle and she's going to have to just kind of be her own healer of her wounds and you know what i'm saying like just not inheriting by default the wounds that are just kind of being passed on and it, it's wounds is like just a misconception and a not questioning a misconception of the way that we do things right it's just like oh well you know the way that we do things is a misconception right like we why do we have to do things the, the way we're doing we're, we're kind of misconceiving um the rules that we're putting on a topic like right? why do these rules have to be what we put on a topic oh but we just do it because it's the way we do things you know you you realize in your your journey through life the people that you cannot have certain type of conversations with right and i love what i was reading it was like um these parents Warren Beatty's dad and her mother because they're kind of the parents that get the most focus um they're just they're not capable of elevating ascending having a new thought process and being a resource for healing for their children so that's really the central theme of what we're seeing going on in this movie um kind of conveniently they tie it to 1920s time frame but i think really and this it was like kind of more of a critique of just kind of society at the time this was in 61 and kind of what it had been up to that point because i do find this poignant too like it's only because this is in 1961 that a film could be made on these topics they said it back in 1920 but it basically is when does the code come into effect in hollywood right it's just i don't know it def definitely ain't in no time in the 20s <laughs> but it's it's the beginning of the 30s right is this code gets put into the only type of content that can be dealt with in hollywood mainstream and so definitely by the dawn of the 60s which is what we talk about on this channel all the time like it's not my heyday sweet spot of watching films i guess i like a lot of the restrictions of the code in all honesty <laughs> um so it's only that a film in 61 could just as blatantly deal with these um, exact topics and i cannot wait to get started watching this one again it's you kind of gotta just we're gonna watch Splendor in the Grass because this is quite an experience of a movie. And just to point out also, Natalie Wood receives Best Actress Oscar nomination for this. So playing in three, two, one, click. That's right, Warner Brothers. Yeah, I did see that they made this movie quite a um, tackling a serious topic movie. That's the interesting thing about Warner Brothers. It's like they have these amazing entries into all time best movies and then just known B-list movies too. And there we have introducing Warren Beatty. This music, uh, that is such an integral part of the experience of it, the intensity of it. Let's pay attention to who is doing it. David Amram, okay. This William Ng guy is the one that writes the screenplay. Costume designer Anna Hill Johnstone. We haven't seen that person so far. But then also Wardrobe, Florence Transfield, George Newman. Okay, well, we haven't seen many movies from the 60s is why I haven't seen that person so far. So it's written by William Ng. So he's who's going to win that screenplay, Oscar. 
What a plane. It's like a stone, right? This <laughs> was on some concrete. <laughs> Cement. Is that, that was the two of them? Okay, that's very symbolic, right? Oh. Hmm. Hmm. So it's so hard for her because she is so in love with him, loves him right, to have this major conflict. Okay, 28. Yeah, it's going to be right around when the market crashes. Okay. But there, we're, we're set. We know it's up right away, right? Oh, okay. So is she coming home too late? Because here's the mom. Oh, she's just coming to unlock the door. Yeah, they're so in love. So he's not just trying to, like, toss her aside because she didn't give it up, right? Oh, well, okay, so the mom locks the door when she retires, but she had to come creep down to unlock it for this little girl little girl, right? So is Dini under an impression that like her mom didn't just come and creep and unlock the door for her? Like that her moves aren't being so monitored or does she know? came in the house. She about locking that door. She seriously talks about that to her. She doesn't want milk. Uh -huh. Yeah, he wouldn't care. They're not... Okay. She got some thick bread and a lot of peanut butter in the middle of it. Okay, Mom, look at how hard you're looking at her. Do you... You suspect that the more is happening between them? Oh. Okay. Why does she know that? You know that she has not had the birds and bees conversation with her in depth. Yes, right? Okay. Ooh. Wow. 
So you're not a nice girl then, Deanie. Okay, because, no, look at her mom and her dad. This is such an intense, um, Okay, she's too big, right? Like that, the way she was holding her like she was four was very drastically out of place. Well, she doesn't feel like that, Mom. She's got a drop-dead gorgeous young man <laughs> if they pursue to marriage, right? They would enjoy that time. I mean, Mom, that could have been something that you're enforcing better just for that than because that's going to accomplish all this shit that you just messed up in her mind. Yeah, poor thing. She's very in love with him. She's the dawning of a new generation where it's like... I, in this day and age, people, we wouldn't consider getting into the establishment of marriage with some dude where you just do it for children's sake. Well, you didn't already know this? Tonight, you found that out. Okay, so here's his home life. What in the world? There's some type of a meeting going on is what it sounds like. Okay, are just workers done for the day? What in the world? <laughs> Prohibition. What's going on? No special occasion, no. Uh, with the ball. <laughs> I run with the ball. Okay. So, Bud's got to run for you. So, you've got to run. Does he say that? Oh my gosh. Would he be ashamed? Okay. Okay. What is he trying to talk to him about? The dad is the one. Okay, he... he
He is all drunk, huh? Well, what's doing right just not getting this girl pregnant? What's that? That's her, his problem is the sister. What both of these parents don't seem to realize is they have good kids in him and Deanie. Oh, he doesn't know how Deanie is? What? Okay. Yeah, good night, though. Wow. Yeah, it's just... Fractured parents, different ways, different areas, reasons. <sighs> is this girl his daughter? She did get married. Is it his daughter or that lady's daughter? <laughs> There's just approaches, right? Like, she's a bad kid. Bad seed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so Phoebe's been the mother character. Okay. He is eating the heck out of his breakfast. I mean, look, there's Bud. He's good. This one has been told so much to repress herself that she's going to the extremes. But when you're dealing with a kid that is good, like, you could take the approach of trying to interact with them a bit more. As a parent, you've got to be able to tell that receptivity to your messaging when your kids are not giving you a hard time. You know what I mean? But the parents are oblivious. Doesn't matter that their kids are not giving them a hard time. Of course, that's expected that they shouldn't, right? But there's no benefit to communication with them. Yeah, he's proud to have Deanie on his arm because he's about her for the right reason. It doesn't have anything to do with her social standing. Oh, look at her. Ah, there, there it is. Oh, the teacher's very concerned about what she sees. These poor sweet kids. Nothing is going on with them. Okay, the teacher doesn't get any, right? Because <laughs> she 
but she sat there and monitored that just to jump on her in front of everybody. She's just, this love between the two of them is so pure. girls just tell the girls to shut the F up just tell them to shut up This girl wants to talk and she doesn't want her to speak. Oh, Juanita is completely a flapper. She's in class in her little flapper dress. Oh! Just do that then. Say it. Get it out in the open. But they're looking at her because Bud puts her on a pedestal. Danny does. I liked the way he had her books completely, right? Like, she didn't need to even be concerned about her books until the bell rang. Uh-oh. Okay, well, he's got pent-up frustrations, right? Hmm. Oh, uh, so she's the village bicycle. Everybody's had a ride. Okay, so they're just switching the scene. Oh, so Dini's in his car. So Juanita's not ugly, uh, she ain't a little troll, that's just a hoe that kind of needs to be to get some play. Yeah. He's very pent up and frustrated. Is that what you expect out of me? Because I guess, yeah, these dudes, I guess we're having to speak for them too, right? He's doing enough by not forcing her, right? And so she shouldn't have to ex the right to expect him to not notice other girls too. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. He wouldn't have anybody to relate to. Well, don't F it up then, bud. Because those neighbors are standing right at the fence and people are looking through their curtains. Hmm, I'm kind of, I know you only going to have the first time being here in your house, in the living room. Be in that car huh? where they have more privacy. I mean, just because the house might be empty, I, they wouldn't dare. Okay, that's totally obvious, Dee Dee. Yes. Okay, well, but that's not the way to speak to her. They're young. Hurt people hurt people, huh? Bud's hurt. See, what's this? Where did that come from? What was the need for that, bud? You just humiliated her. He's kind of not all good, huh? Yeah, take it a bit more serious. Hmm. It is a bit obsessive, right? Like, this is codependent. This is not healthy either. But... It's real for her. This is the way she's feeling about him. I mean, he wasn't put off by that. I, they're in this thing together. Okay, well, here's mom back. That's what I'm saying. Like, nothing more was going to be able to take place. So, within the confines of only what they can do, you know, like, again, she's being obedient. She's a good little girl. This is what they need to be doing right now because adults are around. She had just made up her mind at that point, okay. 
And so you told him that. Wow. Okay. Mom. See, why does she talk to Dini like that when she knows she has not given her details? Why does she doesn't directly talk to Dini? You know, you would get into trouble. One of those awful operations. Oh, Mom, because every one time you've just been totally frank and explained to Dini what that process is. See, that's so bizarre the way this generation of people just always expected their kids to know everything they needed to know on their own. Who are they supposed to be getting this education from? Certainly not them. Okay, because the mom's just on the verge of a nervous breakdown to be dressed and down out of her bedroom, right? Just turning off the music. Oh. Okay. With my boy. The only one that matters, right? Okay, what? Oh, he wanted to talk to him. Oh, because he's planning to be with her. And he doesn't care if he gets her in the family way. They spoke to each other what was going to happen between them. That's who she is to him, his support system. Hmm. Waiting. He was saying, he said waiting. What is the mother just observing? And he's such a nice young man that Anyways, I mean, he just messed up with her about the slave thing, but um, he wasn't even contemplating what his dad is about to say. Two kinds of girls? All right. bud. Okay. See, he loves her. These people cannot fathom their love involving all of these emotions and the connection that experiencing it physically would be about. Like, oh, we only do it to make children. Wow. He doesn't want to have to. Wow. So, poor Bud. I mean, okay, because 
who's going to yell? They're so sweet, it's sickening, right? Who comes to this church? <laughs> is, that, is that girl <laughs> in church? Is he going to be looking right at his sister? Okay. Oh, because they're in love, Mom, right? Is that your heart? Okay. <laughs> what part of it did you hear? Oh, I'm like, who's running out under the umbrella coming up to the tree to get all hugged up? It's the two of them. Oh, this, the reverend is not at all pleased. See, this is a bit too much screen time with the reverend. We didn't need to see his thorn birds issues. Yes, like that's the moral to this story. Yes, everybody needs to be a hypocrite. Okay, mom, looking and because she's counting the dollars. Now, why, bud? Because I thought like that time that we just saw them in the car was when they were supposed to consummate. See, this part right here is a little slow. Like, we don't need this. Um, character development just to explain the contrast of, like, you put too much pressure and you have a good boy like Bud who's just going to absorb it and let his mind get effed. Or you'll have some harlot like her that's going to take it to the extreme. She's going to be feeling repressed, so she's going to do the most. Oh, can he comprehend the words that she just said? Wow. He, does he understand English? <laughs> This part is like the womp womp part of the movie. I, it's too much time is spent here. Oh gosh, these poor, yeah, little kids, Deanie and, what's his name, bud? are going to be scandalized. But they have to be the chaperones. Mm. In training. But he's also just, it's a good boy. Sign, you know, that he's displaying. She's a good girl. Just having to show the contrast. Yes.
to get it in these two right here this is the land that he wants to be able to farm he does want a simple life She doesn't want her to have to wait four years without a ring. Okay, Dad. Oh, she's dyed her hair a different color. gonna get it this girl oh of course it's not the same person right? try and meet? Yeah, of course not. Runs with the ball! just a hot mess all of this is everyone yeah I mean we get a bit too few minutes or too many minutes with this girl okay I mean, because it's like why are we seeing her for so long going to ask about what to do. Mm. Yeah, Christmas Day. Oh. Is he done with her now? Was that the end of the line? Find out what? The dad can be pretty crazy, huh? Oh. Yeah, he makes his own homebrew. There's plenty of alcohol. Okay, so it's just New Year's Eve. Too loud, my goodness. Oh, it's turning into 1929. Oh, they're 
was just teeny, okay, and but. So, yeah, it's this four years pressure. But she's going to wait, and her mom is pissed that he hasn't given her a ring to have her waiting. Who is this? Okay, it's just a wild and crazy party. This girl is just such the extreme representation of, you know, like, there's no middle ground, right? You have to be a little Puritan like Bud or total harlot like his sister. And it seems like either way you're going crazy. Oh, so like now she's being ostracized by everybody in this party. That looks like his mother. Oh gosh. Okay. Is she going to slap the shit out of him again? Is she really? I don't, don't even gather that she's really that drunk. She's just being herself. She's going to start hitting him. Yeah, he is a nice boy. Okay, so she's hating her life. She actually doesn't want to be a hoe anymore, right? She would rather not have to be a hoe because she knows the level of regard. I mean, at this party with her dad right here. Is that Joe? Because there definitely seems to be a person named Joe. I mean, is it just her and Joe or all of these dudes? Oh.
So, I mean, her family has washed their hands of her. Right here in this place. Yeah, this is Joe. Oh, she is pretty drunk. Okay. What's that? And who is this? Oh, he's looking for that girl's boyfriend. Does he hit him? Does he end up getting beat up? Yeah, they are hitting him. Oh. Poor Dini. See, his family is the trash. sweet little Deanie. Does he come? No. This doesn't have anything to do with the two of them right now, does it? But Okay, he saw Okay, well, his sister is in no way, shape, or form what's on track for Deanie. So he just plays all the sports, huh? Most, okay. Not everybody though, huh? Most, not all. Is, okay, here's Bud. Dini's not in his class. It doesn't seem like they have any classes together, huh? He just takes her books. What he did really bad. It's a Yale, yeah. really physically going through it without her, huh? Yeah. The torment, that's what his sister said, you know, it's like, listen to dad and torment yourself. I didn't, I remember what happens to Dini. I forgot, like, how bad a shape he's in from this self-inflicted
separation between the two of them when she is his support system. Wow, yeah, I totally forgot that we see Bud going through it. Okay. Psychological, oh. Psychological only, right? Nothing physically the matter with him. This depressed pastor all the time. Huh? Why is the pastor still standing there? That was a creepy shot. Wow, I cannot believe how I completely forgot what Bud's going through. Okay, this doctor is the most prime example. Okay, well, doctor, why are you bringing that up if you are 100% not going to speak to him, continuing to be frank. Doc, you're bringing it up. <laughs> yes. This dude, this is right here when you cannot have conversations with people that just can't handle the conversation. Yes. Oh, yes. The way that it was. Okay. Yeah. He used his words. He does not. He's not equipped. Mm. This guy, so no. How creepy, like, but you gotta read the room. Read the room. Okay, that's all this dude can do. Mm -hmm. But this was not about to be the conversation, okay? Yep. This is the girl.
So, uh, Dini knows. How come she knows? She knows, and this is her state now. This is what is so impactful. It's obviously the camera work. Might as well, yeah, I mean, Sai so stops commenting, but it's like, you're not going to stand there next to that bitch. You might as well just come into the room. She doesn't have any reason to not be coming straight into the room anymore, right? And this little girl is just a hoe, but she's also a bitch, right? Because she's like, yeah, I had you, man. That is exactly the way... This is the poem that the movie is based on. <clears throat> what Dini's going through. Oh, no. In a way, Ms. Metcalf is just trying to handle her class with these little hooligans that she knows she has in the class, but it's going to break Dini down. Oh, this bitch, see, she would get slapped. what this little bitch was doing with her man. Youth. Idealistically, huh? And I love the way they're going to show this bitch got her wig snatched. Mm-hmm, little bitch. She has loyal friends, huh?
It's Ms. Metcalf's class, right? He was just coming to ask about Dini. Um, I thought this was the school. They aren't watching this movie at school. Oh, he is. Oh, about Dini? But I just know you're not my friend. What the heck are they smoking like that? That is not a cigarette. <laughs> this meal is seared in my mind. I would eat this. I was reading something, though, that said it's very symbolic. It's just like, yep, yeah, let's fatten her up, right? Like, that's all that it's going to take. That's This is the only way that we will address the breakdown that you've had, Deanie. Yum. See, Miranda Dad already told her that. But this looks so effing good, though. <clears throat> well, she knows everybody's always looking. Okay, so obviously the stock market was crazy right before it crashed. Okay, Dad, seriously? Oh, yeah, but, you know, just eat your gravy and potatoes, Deanie. Yep, yeah, snap out of it, Deanie. Because you're not supposed to want anything from him you're you're supposed to be a nice girl okay oh well Deanie mom is not equipped Yeah, Dini, you do, too, no. And she has to talk to her mom like this <clears throat> to make it clear to her mom not to do Yeah, Mom, she knows what you mean, because you're always only telling her that she knows what you mean. Spoil you? Ooh, it's too hot, Deanie.
medicine. There's energy in your locks. She's going for a fresh look. The shame. Who is this? It's not, but, um. His name will be Toots, huh? She's standing right there, you can see. The mom doesn't like that she's standing there in a robe. Huh? Oh, had she seen her hair yet? No, she had not. <laughs> oh, the parents are standing right there. With tits. Why is she thinking about going? She doesn't give me a malicious intent. Yeah. She thinks she knows what she has to do, but I gather it's all about trying to connect with Bud. Like, she couldn't bring herself to be bothered with toots. Mom will leave the door open, but she doesn't. And see, she's not impressed that about toots, but she's like, oh, she's pulling it off. She's going to get attention. Yeah, the whole thing is about seeing Bud, but to get him back, not to punish him. She's too sweet on him. Do they jump up and down? <laughs> yeah, she's just looking for bed. Is that little hoe there with him? No, okay. Okay, well, it's not the home. She isn't going to care so much about that, huh? It's not the home. Uh, she don't care. Because now it opens up Bud.
What is he doing? Did she say for a cigarette? Oh yeah. What, Dini? Jeez, it's been a couple of months. So why are you guys not together? So Bud just knows what's in store that he doesn't want to deal with with her. But look at her. This is reminding him of his sister. I mean, he is killing her. Because it's like, well, you gotta make up your mind. What do you want, you know? Bracelet. Ooh. Toots, she has never given you two seconds of thought. Danny, you're not about to engage with him, are you? I don't know why it took me so long to recognize that, yes, for a couple of seconds, huh? Uh-oh. Where's Bud? Okay, Toots. He stopped as long as she said a different name. There is 
is no really needing to try and understand or comprehend. Um, because, like, I mean, unless you could go off of the deep end like this, then it's not logical or coherent what's going on here. It's just um, painting the picture of the torment by just adhering, adhering to these societal protocols that just don't match the level of attraction and desire that you have for your potential mate. All they want to do is get married and be together. I mean, if they could just do that, this thing would temper down quite a bit between them. I mean, I feel like they are true. There's something to say about the depth and level of this love that they have, right? Like, neither one of them will experience this level of relationship with anybody else again. There's something to say about that. And that is what is real between the two of them. And so it's like anybody in their, you can't even say support system because that would just be the default term to use, but they don't have a support system. But so anybody that's close to them, their relatives, cannot fathom the type of love connection that they have going on. I will say, this is giving me between the two of them like twin flames. I mean, because this level of trauma that they go through when they try to separate from one another is what clues you into something a lot different than what anybody else in their proximity is dealing with. None of these boys have a girlfriend that they're as connected to as but is to Dini, and then vice versa. All of the girls were just sitting there admiring Dini's moments of reveling in being his wife, right, in her little notebook. Okay, well, this doctor's not going to get it. Oh, that was her dad asking. So things weren't better, Mom. Well, not really the cause, parents. lying there. Oh, this dude. He's just gonna cut a check. Cause my boy's gotta run with the ball. Is he gonna talk about this girl in front of her family. Oh. oh okay. Okay. Cuz they are not equipped. She's incapacitated her, like, that's interesting, they don't let us see what he's seeing, but she's incapacitated.
complete breakdown, huh? So, in all obviousness, that is something that's inside of her that's capable of breaking down that far, right? These scenes are always sad. When Scarlet wanted Rhett. And if they could have, then they just would have had a healthy marriage again, right? And they never had one, but that would have done it. Not taking phone calls, right? Not answering emails or not opening letters. Wow, he couldn't give less of an F. He's rebelling, you know, yeah. Taking matters into his own hands, huh? Was that Deanie? Wow. We're kind of in the home stretch now because by the time this young lady's being introduced, a lot has been developed. Uh, he calls her. Another? Yeah, he's never even had it. Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> she looks like Dinia in a way. How come he knew her name? Hmm. Hmm. My name broke her down. That's what you know he feels that way. He doesn't even know what that is. Oh yeah, he has had three bottles. Big bottles. It'll be interesting. Look at how she interacts with her mother. Doesn't she, like, cuss her mom out, basically? That's the amount of interaction we're going to see her with her parent, but Shane dealing with nothing that those two have broken down about. I wonder if this guy right here wrote the screenplay. Hmm. 
So, you know that in order for her to be here and just taking her time and she, you know, no pressure, no rush, her family had that money, sold what they needed to to get the liquid cash, and here she is. That's a big part of what their savings was but they got it out just in time, right? Because, I mean, I've always kind of marveled at that. You know, what are the breaks that we have in life where sometimes you just maybe feel like, wouldn't it be very helpful if you could just go sit down, right? And just have the freedom of sitting there like we saw her in the chair, right? You just take a rest. Who can afford to do that, right? No, we can't afford these types of months. Six months, she just said. Well, she's needed every minute of it, and it would not do her well to see you guys yet. Coming home to you guys. Maybe seeing them, but... Okay. Is she going to be able to manage that? little girl She would not know. Well, the mom's trying, you know. P proper. How you feeling, Deanie? Oh, okay, great, Mom. And she hasn't really needed to contend with that until you guys are here. Great. They're, they're giving her a dose of something is not okay, right? But she's here. What? Maybe what, Danny? Okay, this is a setback for her. A uh, hell no. Is the nurse going to step in? Is she going to keep going on? We came all the way down here. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. No. He was trying to force the issue. Oh, she's leaving the room. Now that really is as much as you got with her mom. Mm-hmm. 
No, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. And anyway, that's all you can control, right? Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can tell she was feeling a little bit better, right? Did he, he was writing to her? He was? interesting I mean regardless of what we think about that she has made a new connection Fourteen billion. Wow. Where is the dad right now? Because I was wondering, like, why is he in this weird-looking room? Uh, he's stalking his son. Because his son doesn't know that he's here yet. Oh. Novel concept, Dad. Uh, let the boy say a thought that he has about his life. Oh. He thinks it's that girl. No, it's not the girl. No, oh, okay, great. Is he available 
to keep talking? Does he need to leave? He just said he's got to go. Jeez. I was like, what, is it getting rated? No. seen his sister again, huh? She just took off. I feel like they said this is Phyllis Diller's first movie. I, they said the name Phyllis Diller and I was like, we haven't seen her yet. Seriously, this is their routine. So he really thinks it's the waitress. That's the first time the dad is speaking to him like a human being. Hmm. He's looking at his dad because he's never... experienced him being sincere or like not viewing Bud as transparent. Right? It's like he's just always seeing right through her, him. Okay.
Yeah. Because love, it's nobody around these two. So now it becomes a question of it's like, is their love as intense as it was for, I think it was because they have nobody that is authentic around them. They were that with each other somewhat and then in ways not as well. Um, but it's like the people around them, their parents, right? Don't experience love period. So for the fact that those two were just genuinely in love with each other, nobody understands it. Nobody gets it. All that ticker tape, like those are just messages that he's getting. Did he send that girl away? Yes. It was interesting the music they put to that, huh? And this clock ticking. Wow. Wow, she was gone for a long time. Nothing would ever be the same again. Yep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. That look, huh? He writes. Okay, so they didn't come pick her up. She's going on her own. She's walking into the den on her own. They were saying this door scene is very symbolic.
So she's prepared. She's equipped now to do that. Well, this old woman right here is very symbolic as well. Oh my goodness. I guess there's like getting well or not, you know, and if she seriously just said that to the doctor that she's going to see Bud, then company for her. Wow. Did that man get it for her? Oh, good gosh. Now what? No. They told her that she just has to look at them as people and not as mom and dad. Okay, here we go. Breaking the cycle of unhealed mentality. Oh, okay. I just cannot continue on in my life living your ideals and your conceptions on things. And I'm going to be moving to Cincinnati. Oh, the pictures. The mom is lying to her, huh? They're gonna jump up and down her. Huh? Hazel? Don't tell her about Oh liar Cabrona Mentorosa Okay Damn mom So she was lying to Dini 
and lying to these girls. Why she's getting dressed up. She already knew her mom was lying to her. Is she going to say, I want to go see Bud in front of her mom? Look at her dad. Okay, yeah, we did see this before. Yeah, that's where the oil rigs were. I mean, this is horrible, but my first um, reaction was... He's not doing, like, way better than her, right? Did she just say round back? She just sprung that on him. How is she? Is he definitely going to ask that? Yeah. So something that I read is that they said these two are realizing that they still love each other. That's how she just found out. But again, yeah, look at her just kind of clutching her pearls standing in his house. Huh? He's not doing worlds better without her. Danny's getting married too, huh?
Does she say no? Ilya Kazan said this was the most adult ending that he ever filmed. Hmm. Yeah, I'm glad they cut that out right when they did. In one way, I do like what this story showed because I think like any of us that can ever have a difficult time with a love relationship, right? And, you know, you take it as far as you do in that struggle. Um, this movie supported that, right? Because I think that <laughs> that's what I was saying. Any of us that have had our struggles probably have not had two and a half years of time go by where we were someplace for that, you know? And so it shows, it's like, yes, th that can be very real, right? The struggle is real, but it kind of just makes you feel encouraged. I, I was really kind of wondering how I was going to respond to this right now. And it's like, if she can get better and if she can get over it, um, that's hopeful. All right.
that's enough to say about it. Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, really appreciate your support here, and we will see you next week with another watch along. Alrighty, bye bye. Thank you guys so much for watching this movie with me. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Hey, hit that thumbs up button for me, especially if you're hearing my voice saying this right now. <laughs> you watched to the end. Um, go ahead and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you can always be aware of our newest titles to watch together. See you next time.